Hi, my name is Andy Anthony and in this demo today, we're going to take a look at how to use Datamir to perform complex unions. We're first going to talk about what is a union, what are the union types, and what are some drawbacks of using only code with Snowflake SQL. And then we're going to introduce Datamir and go for a demo. So let's dive in. So what is a union? A union combines rows from two or more tables or queries into a single result set. So you don't append two tables together horizontally. So what's the difference between a join and a union? Well, at a fundamental level, a join is used to match tables based on a condition. So it combines data from many tables based on a matched condition between them. On the other hand, a union combines the result set of two or more select statements and it's more like an appendage so you're appending one table to another and producing new distinct rows so that's what a union is and that's what a join is so let's take a look at the different types of union and two more operations that are typically and commonly used with unions What does union all do? Union all is very similar to a union, but the difference is it returns all the data from all the tables, no matter if it's a duplicate or not, but a union only returns unique values. So the intersect operator helps to know what two queries or what two tables have in common. That's what the intersect operator does. So what does the minus set operator do? The minus, also called the except operator, works very similar to a left join in that it only returns the data that is in the first query that is also in the second query. That's what it does. In this section of the video, we're going to follow a methodological approach to proving whether the statement is true or false. We're going to go through two examples one basic and simple and the other more complex. We'll start off with a not so complex union operation. The two tables, customer and client, and all we simply want to do is perform a union operation on the country column. This is the demo session. In this session, we're going to actually write union code inside Snowflake. And this example is gonna be a really simple one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my worksheet that I created a couple hours ago and create the tables as seen in the blog post and the slide. So this is the customer table. This is the client's table. These are the insert statements and then we run a simple union on country. So let's just run that and see what happens. And that works just fine. Very simple, very easy. And with code, with just a few lines of code, we're able to do our union, which makes sense. So in the next example, we're going to do something more complex and then try to explain why you need a SQL visualization tool for more complex queries. So let's dive into the next example. In the next example, we're trying to answer a more complex problem with the union in. Please feel free to follow along or try this out for yourself before you watch the solution. We've included all the inserts and all the code we use in the blog post. So let's dive in. Welcome to the second demo. This demo is nothing like the first. In the first demo, we had easy tables with similar structures and similar data types, and we did a union on the country's column, which made perfect sense. But if you notice in this particular table, and according to the slides, we have disparate structures. So we notice that the tables first have different data types, as you can see from the client's table having text data types, to orders having only integer and some text data types, to 
having different number of columns. So we have four columns here, we have three here, and then we have five here. And the goal is to create a uniform structure that would make business sense. So that's what we wanna do with this order customer and clients table. So let's just run the code and I'm gonna explain a bit more as we go on. All right, so let's examine the CT expression that we see here. What are we trying to do? We're trying to achieve a table with a uniform structure. And what that means is the table should have the same number of columns as well as similar data types. So one column can have two data types. That's what we're trying to achieve. So it makes business sense. So how, so how do we do that? The first thing we want to do is we are unioning the customer table twice because the customer table has five columns as opposed to four. So phone has a different column and email has a different column. And because of that, we union it twice. So one customer can have email as one info type and phone as well as another info type, as we would see in the answer below. The second thing we did was to take the same approach for the client's table. And for the orders table, because the order table has five columns, this was a bit more complex than the previous unions, which is sore. For the orders table, what we did was to make it make business sense by doing a concatenation on those numbers. So as you can notice, the order table has text data types, but numbers as well, and IDs. So this join is to pull out the customer name from the customer's table to replace the customer ID. And the concatenation is to join all these up together and show them as one text. So let's run the full code and see what happens. So we can see that John Doe appears twice because we you know the customer table twice, but also appears twice with different values one for email and one for phone. And we can see with our order tables, we see the info values. So when we scale this out, we start to see why we would need some kind of tool or some kind of help to reduce the complexity of our code or why we don't even have to use a code approach at all. So what is data mirror? We've talked a lot about using SQL code and unioning in Snowflake. So why all this talk about data mirror? Data mirror is a low code, no code SQL visualization tool built for Snowflake. So if you're using Snowflake, you really want to get data mirror and you'll see why in a minute. Great. So we're in data mirror now. And in this section, I'm going to show you how you can drive powerful transformations using simple drag and drop properties. So if we remember the last code we wrote in the worksheets, the complex union, and we take a look at this, this is the exact same code in a sense, but all I had to do was drag and drop and click a couple properties to achieve my final results. So we take a look at this and see that it's the exact same thing we have, if you notice here. So how did I do this? I leveraged DataMere's properties, things like the union, the join, and these are all drag and drop functionalities. And that's really amazing. I don't have to write a code. Or I don't have to put aliases. I don't have to remember my syntaxes. All I have to do is use the options available to create transformations that I need. And the interesting thing is we can always keep track of what's going on. We can share this with people. We can put this in a state of ready and do some data lineage and you know maintain data quality and documentation with DataMirror. 
And that's something that's really interesting. And when we're done, if we're satisfied, we can deploy that back into Snowflake by clicking here. So I hope this is helpful. I'm going to include links to the demo of how to use the different functionalities in Datamere. But I hope you found this demo helpful and rock on with your Datamere. Bye.